televiewers and before we went on that break we were talking about business incorporations and mr laie emmanuel was actually telling us some prizes necessary for you to have your business incorporated mr laie emmanuel we are going to come back to you because uh the enterprise and the private private and public based companies they have various prizes and we want you to reiterate on that okay i, I was just going to say that uh, just to correct this, um, 56, 5, and 67, 5, respectively. And uh, you can get your certificate of incorporation. Okay. Yes. And that is So, what, uh, actually, what people, many people face difficulties is, is the processing of those documents before they actually go at this final stage. You see? Well, um, Mr. Emmanuel, I'm going to hold you there for a bit. That is uh, the difficulties of people face to process some of these documents. We are going to come back to that, but let's go and meet Mr. Atewa. See, he's really okay. itchy to talk. He has a lot to say, a lot to tell our viewers. Just to let you know, tell our viewers, please, you can equally send a message. You can ask a question. You can give your feedback on the numbers on your screen. Please send an SMS or a WhatsApp mission. A message. Please do not call. I'm begging again. Do not call. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Man, um, Mr. Robert, I'm coming over to meet you now. I just want you to go back on the advantages you have given us the company as a legal entity, and of course, a company and its credibility. We want to get some of these advantages. Why should I, as a businesswoman, want to incorporate my business? Okay, I talk about the credibility uh, of the company. It gives credibility and it gives assurance to your customers. Secondly, it, the if it is a limited liability company, the liability of the members of the company of shareholders is limited, and uh, it means that the promoter of the of the business uh, has a limited liability to it. So it has a liability protection. Okay, that gives it members, meaning that if the company are uh, involved uh, into a business operations. And along that business operation, uh, they incur some losses, okay? An individual does not show that the entire losses of that, uh, of that business. Okay. It, 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 it is shared to its members, okay? So you have a liability protection that it offers you. And sec also, uh, it also uh, gives, uh, gi gives you an upper hand to secure uh, contracts, okay, and projects. For example, in Boya, there are certain agencies that if you want to... Uh, do business with them if you want to uh, take a contract with them if you want to work with them you have to show that you have to show certain documentation that you have done for example you have to show that you are a registered company you are paying tax you have to show that you are paying a taxpayer your, your business is a taxpayer and you also have a, a, a bank account and to open a bank account in the name of your business you must show certain documentation that you must show to the bank. The, 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 the certificate of incorporation, that is a certificate that shows that you are a registered business. You have to show a certificate of non-indebtedness to show that you are not owing the government. You are a taxpayer, you are a taxpayer, and you have to show a taxpayer's document to the bank before the bank can op open an account in the name of your business, in the name of your business. So these are some of the, and if you don't have this document, they cannot open an account in the name of your business. They cannot open, open an account to you as an individual because your business is not registered. But when you register your business, uh, you are able to secure a bank account in the name of your business. You are able to secure contracts, okay, with other uh, top agencies, which is why I would like to raise a point on this. Uh, statistically, which we have carried out at um, Evergreen Business uh, Hub, we have realized that in, in Boya, in every 50 businesses in Boya, only one among those 50 is registered. All right, now we are definitely going to come to that. <laughs> it's really, really very funny. You know, there are a lot of people talking about company, my company, my this, my this, my this. And you want to go and look deep down. They are not actually registered. Mr. Robert, I'm going to hold you there. We are going to leave that part of the soup for, you know, okay. a better time. Now I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Laya Emmanuel, and I'm going to ask you some of the disadvantages. Of course, if there's an advantage to something, there's definitely a disadvantage some of the disadvantages of having a business incorporated okay thank you very much again for that question um, actually what I can tell you is that taxation the registering a company means that you have 
you have grown up, you want to expand your business, you want your business to be known legally, mm -hmm. and it goes with certain uh, it goes with certain expenses. I mean, it go, goes with certain engagement, which when you are paying taxes to the government, it means that at that level, when you have registered your company, it means you have made your stand known that from now on, I want to be contributing to the government revenue. Remember, taxation is the heart of every government, mm -hmm. especially in our country, which is, a de which is a developing nation. And so when you are playing with such, or you are playing with taxation, it means you are indirectly playing with it heart of the government. So when you register your business, you start paying taxes and of course we know there is no direct benefit for that. But what the government does is that they, 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 they create a business enabling environment for you. So you don't have, so you have to be incurring those expenses. At a certain level, when we begin to treat taxation, we no longer see it as an expenditure in our statement of comprehensive income will begin to look at it as a shareholder because the government begins to partake in your business whether you like it or not you have to pay so we call it a forceful shareholder so i look at it as a forceful shareholder of a business so you cannot really have a direct benefit but we know that the security of every nation is for the fact that they can be able to secure persons and so when your business is legal the 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 the, 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 the government can also secure uh, you. All right. So you're saying one of the disadvantages of having a business incorporated is that the government partakes as what you would like to call a forceful shareholder yes. in the business. Now, my question to you is: uh, when you say a forceful shareholder, we know that the government probably partakes in it by you know receiving the tax, like you mentioned, and you have, you and all what not you have said. But now, do they give out subsidies to you? Yes. Um Actually, the government gives incentives depending on the sector. Remember, we have different sectors as far as okay. taxation is concerned. We have the agricultural sector, we have the IT sector. Now, I want to talk about the IT sector. Uh, in the IT sector, when you register, or generally, when you register, the first year of operation, you are being given exemption for business license. Now, when I talk about exemption for business license, some people don't understand very well. They think that once you have registered your company, you will not pay tax for that year. You will not pay any amount to government for that year. It's not true. It is not like that. It has a misconception. You, you are exempted from paying business license, but there are other small taxes, small charges that you have to pay for you to continue for instance, doing declaration. Mm -hmm. for, for, for instance, you have a verbal rent. Cancel tax. You have cancel tax. You have um, uh, stamp duty, which you have to pay. All right. yes. so, so you you do that exclusively uh, social contributions it means that uh, uh, social insurance fund contribution is not part of it yes even though some people see it as a tax but it is not actually a tax because it is just a contribution you are giving to benefit in the future Okay, Thank just you. a benefit you're giving to benefit in the future. We are still going to want to hear, you know, the audience really want to hear another a disadvantage of being uh, of owning a business which is, you know, incorporated. You've made mention of forceful shareholder. I would really like to add to that one on the list. So you just, you know, keep up with uh, the disadvantages of a business which has been incorporated. A business which has been some disadvantages of incorporated businesses. Okay. Uh, another ad uh, disadvantage is that you are now at that level where you have to keep record. Okay. You have to keep accounting record to show when there is control, when taxation comes or control. So taxation will not be visiting you to find out what you are doing, provided you are not, uh, your record is not clean with them. So you are expected that at the end of every financial year, you are supposed to prepare your account, which we call um, a statistics and tax return, and submit to the to the tax uh, center, to your tax center. Now, now that taxation has gone online, you submit it also online. You submit it online, and then you submit a copy to your tax center. So those, that goes with charges, because for somebody, for a consultant or for an accountant to prepare your statistics and tax return, uh, they call it uh, DSF. Some people uh, know it only as DSF. You have to incur some charges on that. 
Yes, that is how our system is structured. Even though some people begin to complain that how can I want to pay taxes and then I'm incurring additional charges to pay my tax. But that is how it has been made because not everybody that knows how to go about the statistic and tax returns. The, this year it has just been increased to more than 50 pages. It used to be about just 39 pages, but now the document has been increased to over more than 50 pages. And so you have to go through that even though you are not expected to fill every page of the document, but uh, you have to fill that which concerns you. And so that is how your activities are being tracked. It therefore means that that document now becomes a snapshot of your enterprise. That document becomes a snapshot of your enterprise. But yes. you know, there, there was this time when I heard someone talking of um, tax evasion, where, the, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 a business owner actually puts, let's say for instance a, business, a businessman sells um, let's say um, expensive jewelry and for that, to ev in order to evade some level of tax, he puts just a little bit of what he sells and the main thing, he keeps them all behind now you're talking of uh, a snapshot of activities what if he doesn't put everything in, you know the documents which have been sent to uh, for him to fill, what if he doesn't put every, every detail, because because I can sit and say, okay, I have 10 bags of rice in my shop. Meanwhile, I have right up to 50 bags of rice. So how, 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 what do you mean by snapshot? I want you to, how did they check those activities? Okay, okay, um, there is one thing that people don't understand. Okay. Yes, uh, actually for the government of Cameroon to have taken taxation online, it is because they have certain statistics of what happened. Even though actually the Cameroon tax system is self-declarative. It means that you are declaring as honest as your conscience tells you. But you have to also understand that when you have been noticed for carrying out fraudulent transactions, people have been penalized for that. And the funny thing is that whenever you are caught, you will pay penalties. And if you have been a good faith taxpayer, they will listen to you. But if you have been a bad taxpayer, the penalties are non negotiable. So you incur lots of that. So there is there is a danger or there are disadvantages when you begin to declare. I have a friend who resigned from a a, a company where the company will normally make large sales and then he was an accountant and they would tell him to just declare small sales. So he said no, he cannot be working like that. How he was trained. He was not trained to operate like this, so he had to resign. So uh, we see those situations where you are supposed to actually uh, declare what is there now take uh, let's look at this when you are a taxpayer you are dealing with another company that also pays taxes it means that when you are submitting your invoice to that because according to the other accounting law regulating company it shows that when you are a legal company you are supposed to have your information like your taxpayers card their taxpayers information on every invoice you are sending out so when you send out such invoices it goes out there and so if you hide certain information it can be discovered from the person you are dealing with and so when that is discovered you will find yourself that is why some businesses have closed they have closed down some businesses and when they discover that that is what you have been doing you face the penalty right. according to the Cameroon right. General Tax Code. You definitely face a penalty. Now, Mr. Robin was about contributing something on this very question, you know, of uh, uh, refusing to show uh, the sales for the day or what you have in stock as a business person. You refuse to show it and you show something else. Mr. Robin, let's hear what you have to say. Yeah, uh, in that part, like the Cameroon tax system is self declarative, as he has uh, rightly mentioned, okay. because the Cameroon government believes that his citizens are of good faith. But notwithstanding, the government have also put in mechanisms to also track business operations. What are some of these mechanisms? Now, they have people in the field who go to the field to actually monitor the business operations of most of these. Uh, registered companies, okay? They go around and they monitor the business operation. Because like, it is, it's very common that somebody goes and register an electronic shop, okay? At the end of the day, you find a person selling uh, cement, selling rods, which on his business registration, it was not his business activity, but he hides behind electronics or electrical uh, materials 
and now he's selling other heavy duty materials so the government has a mechanism that they have, they have put in place that goes around to track about these business operations so if you declare a tax to taxation that does not reflect your business operations they know already and he also said that when you are sending out a, a business invoice to uh, to another company when that company is declaring their tax okay on their declaration your invoice is there so they can actually so if you are lying to the, to the state the state can easily uh, uh get you red-handed to say no at this point why did you not declare this what you, and this is what you do so, the so for those of us who think that we're smarter than the government, the government has already figured this out and of course has plans to catch all these people who are doing this. Well, before we continue with our panelists of today, remember we're talking about business incorporations and like I always tell you, please, the views aired here are the views of the panelists, personal opinions and as bona fide Cameroonians, which we all are. They are entitled to it. Don't forget to send a message. You can send in a question through WhatsApp or SMS. And of course, if you're just joining us, this is the future. I'm going to take this first reaction from an audience and it reads, it is normal, is it normal for a company to, un to incorporate a startup or a freelancer trying to build under them, and in the case where the startup is exploited, what, sh what can such a startup do? Maybe the startup can't meet the credentials to register. Okay, it's a, it's a message from an unknown person. I would really appreciate if you send in, you know, a name or where you're writing us from, but I appreciate that you're watching the program. So is it normal, is it okay for, you know, a bigger business to incorporate a startup? Probably because that startup has not met with the credentials of, you know, incorporating his business. When you talk of having met the credentials to incorporate the business, I would have loved a little bit of uh, elaboration on what you mean by meeting the credential. Because first, the, as uh, Lae as let me just reiterate what Lae Lae earlier mentioned that they are uh, the first. Uh, the first requirement for you to register a business is either you must be a Cameroonian citizen. If you are a Cameroonian citizen and you have gone above the age of 18 years, okay. you are already have the, the credibility to register your company. Okay. And if you are a legal resident in Cameroon, that means if you are a resident in Cameroon, you are a foreigner in Cameroon, and you are legally recognized as a foreigner in Cameroon, you can as well register your business. And the documents required for the registration of the business, like he said, uh, the article of the memorandum of understanding or the article of association of that company it can easily be built mm -hmm. okay it can be uh, done and the tenancy agreement some people operate businesses from their homes okay and if you want to operate if you want to use your home as your business and wherever you are living you have a tenancy agreement for that space where you are living you can get one from your landlord and they will give you that if you don't have a tenancy agreement if you are living in your father's house or whatever you have what we call land tax in the place of tenancy agreement there's land tax that you can provide for that, you can easily get that from the person whom you are living in the space with. And also, the certificate of non-conviction, you can easily get it from your place of birth. It's just 3,000 francs. Franc. You can easily get it from your place of birth. Or at the original level, at the uh, uh, court here, they will send to Yaoundé and they will do it. And they will send it down to you and you will be able to do it. And also, the localization plan where the business is located, you can easily do that. And the government realized that in the past, it was very difficult to get all of these documents or to do this process. And the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises came, came up with a, what we call one-stop shop at every region. Every region one has one of those centers in all ten regions of Cameroon. And that of Southwest is based in Limba at uh, my four Limba, uh, beside the Handicraft Center in my four. Okay. You, and that, at that center, the one-stop shop means that when you go to that center, if you, do, cannot, if you don't want to pass through a consultant or somebody who can help you in the process, and you go to that center with an innocent mind that you want to register your business, but you don't know the process okay at the one-stop shop they have all those services available at one-stop shop okay. meaning that they have a lawyer that can help you build the article of association at a very affordable price okay they have a lawyer that can do the uh, the stamp duty for you for that for the article of association and for the tenancy agreement that you can help you alongside with your landlord to build that tenancy agreement okay so that's what the one-stop shop is there you can go there and they, you have all of these services available at one-stop shop so uh when hiding under the canopy of another company 
a startup, the earlier said a startup, to operate your business because you claim you don't have the credibility, I tell you it's not a backing. Because once they realize that you are hiding under another company that is uh, incorporated, that is registered, and you are operating a different business activity that that company did not declare. It's okay, illegal. it is illegal. It All is right. criminal. So the company will be liable to whatever charges that is is, is is facing. Well, I hope your question has has been answered there. And of course, this other question comes in. A uh, question to Mr. Laye. Okay, what role does the tax collectors play to enhance business growth? Because all we hear and have is tax is collect tax and build business of our company owners. Okay. I will take the question all over again. What role does the tax collectors play to enhance business growth? Because all we hear and have is collect tax and build business or company owners. What role does the tax collectors play? Okay, thank you. Like I earlier said, taxes, when you, are, when you pay taxes to your government, it is because you have come, you have seen that you are a good citizen and you have decided to contribute to the growth of the uh, comp uh, the nation. Mm -hmm. Remember that taxation, when you look at it, taxation contribute about 70 to 80 percent. Okay, this is an assumption. 70 to 80 percent of the government revenue of Cameroon. And so when you are looking at what role the tax collector uh, plays, the tax collector is not to contribute to the growth of your business. You are the one who has created the company and you, the responsibility of the company to grow depends on now, you. Now, I think the person, uh, well, uh, uh, what role do they play in, uh, do tax collectors play in the growth of a business? Now, you know, there are some cases where you find, let's say, uh, come, uh, uh, women in the market, our mothers in the market complaining, oh, these people are always coming here for tax, these people are always coming here for tax, I don't have money to give you people. Now, I think he's talking about, like, uh, uh, when, this, when they come and collect this tax, sometimes it at affects the growth mm -hmm. of your business and i think this is a kind of the, the question that this person is trying to ask okay, okay. um i think I've, I've investigated this before actually when they do like that um what they provide those people who come to the market are normally uh, people from the council okay and so the the take note that the council is the one responsible for cleaning the market they clean the market and keep the place hygienic. The place is clean for you to do your business. So for those people to, to for their upkeep, the council saw the need to, that every business person operating in the market should be able to contribute something because there is need to keep those people too. And which is an advantage of the government to also make sure that they begin to reduce unemployment. Okay, an advantage of the government to reduce uh, unemployment. I'm going to take this other reaction here. When should I register my business? Is okay. it when I have a stable profit or when? Julius from Boya. Okay. Let me uh, uh, Mr. Robert, <laughs> Mr. Robert, tell us something about that. Okay, uh, when should you register your business? Now, when you have a workable business plan, when you have sat down and you have an idea and you believe that this idea can generate you money and you come out with a workable business plan for those who don't know how to be a business plan you can always get to us and we'll help you in, in, in building one when you have a workable business plan that if you follow it point by point you are going to make profit or for your business okay it is it is actually the right time for you to or when you have some people are used to say uh, it is good if you can you can do the market testing Okay, you can do the market testing and collect traction of your business and see the potential of that business. Then once you have done that and you see that that business is, uh, is uh, credible enough to generate profit, okay, to grow, then you, it is high time you move directly and you declare your business existence, okay? Because when you declare your business existence, there is a protection that comes with declaring your business okay so when you incur a certain uh maybe they say there's a catastrophe that happens around your business and your business is affected and they want to pay insurance for some of those things what happened because your business was known and it, the government knew that your business was in that position and they want to compensate those who incur losses they can easily 
compensate you for that purpose. And also, uh, uh, when you start a, a small business and to gain faster credibility in the market, it is good that you get your business registered. So that when you are pitching your business before an investor, you, have, you, you already have all the documentation available. Okay. And to show the investor that you are serious at what you are doing, yeah. you have put, you have done the homework. You have done the work and, and this is what it is. Definitely trust they can definitely you. trust you. Uh, can a company declare bankruptcy if they are not able to pay taxes? Uh, should yeah. I take the question? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. A company declaring that the company is bankrupt uh, in case you, you can't pay taxes, okay? There is a provision for that to show that your business is suffering from economic crisis. Okay, in the process of declaring your tax, because you declare your tax, okay, you make the taxation department of that, uh, uh, of that division to know that actually your company is facing bankruptcy and you are unable to generate uh, profit. So what you are just going to pay at that point in time is uh, what we call a little bit of, uh, uh, let me say, value added tax, which most often the council will just come around you pay a little a tax for occupying the space that you are occupying, and you are going to be the taxation is going to assess your company and see that actually you are facing bankruptcy. So uh, your tax will be as much as what the business turnover is. So they cannot come and impose a tax on you when the business was unable to generate that particular that amount. Profit. Yes. All right. Let's take this other question here. And of course, I'm going to direct this question to Mr. Laye. A friend of mine trying to register his company hired a lawyer and spent about 700,000 francs and above. So I wish to know if a business can be registered without a lawyer. Um, actually, <laughs> that's quite a tricky question. Actually, you, you, you need a lawyer to notarize that article of association. Okay. Yes, you need the lawyer to notarize. If you go to, to the Ministry of Small and Medicine Enterprises without having the lawyers signing those documents, it will not be accepted. So it is very, very important. Uh, I don't know whether the person was trying to re register a private limited company or was a public limited company, but uh, what I think is that when you take every responsibility and give it to the hand of a lawyer or a consultant because I have worked, currently I work with a tax consultant. So when you give your responsibility to somebody to carry it out all for you, the person is the one to determine his charge. So it, 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 is, it depends now on the individual, okay? It depends on the individual. So I cannot determine I, I'm not the one to say, okay, this person is supposed not to collect this amount. I don't know. I don't Can I contribute to All that right, question? all right. Mr. Robert has something to say. Yeah, on that particular aspect of um, last year, I think that was last year, February, I, I was in a meeting uh, which with some ministry, with the Minister of Small Middle Size Enterprise, the Minister of Youth Affairs, and the Minister of um, uh, Vocational Training. And that was an issue that uh, I particularly raised during that meeting that the cost of paying lawyers to produce some of these documents is becoming so alarming. Some lawyers use it as an advantage to exploit these young entrepreneurs who want to contribute towards the growth of our communities. And they, they ask the response that the Secretary General at the Ministry of uh, Small and Medium Size Enterprise gave was, the one-stop shop is there because to minimize this Cost, these courses. And there's a lawyer who works in partnership with these centers. And when you have built these documents, you take them to this lawyer who is always there. He reviews the document for you and see if it's okay. If the document is okay, you simply pay a minimum fee. I think at the one-stop shop in Limbe, they just pay 25,000 francs for the lawyer to do the, to do the uh, stamp duty for you, to do the uh, notarization for you. So, uh, if uh, you only pay high when you want the lawyer to do everything for you. Exactly. If you want the lawyer to do the, to go about, go to your place of origin and go and do your uh, non-conviction, uh, you're going to pay for that. You have to, you have to pay for his, for his services on that. If you want the lawyer to build an article of uh, incorporation or article of association for you, you have to pay for his services for that. Okay? So, when you are 
asking for all of these services from the lawyer to do all of it, you're going to pay his services. But if you can build this document, and you can also go to one stop shop in Limbe and or in, in the region where you are located and ask them for a sample of article of incorporation, they will give you a sample and you go back based on your business activity, build your own which is in line with what you are doing and this, the lawyer will just do the stamp duty and you go about your business and bringing down that uh, 700,000 francs cost you can bring it down to thank very you very business. much mr robert atem 700,000 francs can be reduced to 25,000 francs at the one-stop shop there in limbe please 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 make your findings make your inquiries before uh, you know taking adv adv an, an adventure or engaging in something that you really do not know what it is all about this is why this program is here to enlighten and educate you about some things which are happening in our society that we are not aware of. Tell us, let's go on the break. And when we come back, we are going to continue with our panelists. Don't go anywhere. I'm over. I love you. Hello, my name is Witty Mr. the boy from Sun. How are you doing today? 